What's going on, football fans? It's me, J.R. Clark, back again with the Pound for Pound ATL Live. Joined, as always, by my co-host, Jonathan Holder. Jonathan, what's going on, brother? Man, I'm just relaxing on a Tuesday evening. Uh, just getting uh, twitchy for the, the draft. It needs to hurt and get here. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, like, you know, something we were kind of speaking about uh, before before we went live is I think we're, we're hitting that point where we're a little more than a week out. Obviously, Thursday is a week out. And I think that we we and a lot of uh, people may be hitting like draft fatigue, you know, uh, like Nick says here, you know, ready for the draft, like kind of tired of the mocks. Right. Um, which which I can get that, you know, I can get the the fatigue starts to set in uh, when it when it comes to this type of a of a process. But, you know, as Chris puts it, it is almost draft party time. And, um, like we plan to have a pretty good, hopefully a pretty good show for y'all, uh, next Thursday. We probably won't have anything, uh, this weekend, uh, and probably won't see y'all again until, you know, the day of the draft since we will be, you know, streaming for three days straight, basically. Um, so, you know, we, we have to like put in some family time so we don't get disowned, (laughs) but, um, but yeah, there isn't a, a ton to get into, so to speak. So we'll see what we're going to get into. And for a trifecta, let's just get into it. All right. Hamilton Nash is already coming out the gate swinging. Yeah, I, think, I, think, I think we make this, this uh, show today a big you know, chat heavy show, um, in a sense, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll get our last mock in before. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how it all goes. Hamilton says, <laughs> what's up? Number one Falcons podcast. Yeah. I like that. Number one Falcons yep. podcast. That's what's up. That will get, that will get your question brought up every time. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah. Flattery goes far. You know, that's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how likely are we to get Dallas Turner over law two and verse? Um, and what separates Turner from the rest of the edges that makes him more likely? That's a really good question because on the surface, like if you look at production and stuff like that, you might want to go like you, you might be willing to put Latu at the very head of the class. And for some people, Latu is let's, let's not um, like mince, mince words here, so to speak. This is not a, super blue chip defensive draft. What I mean by that is this draft does not have a, at least on the surface. Now, can these guys turn into perennial all-stars? Obviously they can. Um, but on the surface, we're not rolling into this draft with a Miles Garrett or a Khalil Mack or a... One of the Boses. Yeah, one of the Bosa brothers or a Patrick Sertan or, you know, a Jalen Ramsey. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not, you don't have a clear cut top 10 you know defensive guy which in a sense like works well for us uh because you know if we stay at eight we should have the pick of the litter of what we want right uh whoever the falcons have at the top of their big board but to his question what you know seth what makes turner different than or you know ranked ahead now, obviously, this is all just opinions based, but listening to the um, analyst people that I have listened to, the reason why, and they all say generally about the same thing, is the reason why Turner is ranked higher is his athletic metrics, you know, as far as like speed, bend, power. For a 250 pound guy, he sets a really good edge. Um, you know, in the run game, he's uh, active in, you know, dropping back into coverage uh, when asked to do so. But one of the biggest deals is that a lot of people feel like he has not hit his ceiling at being only 21. Mm-hmm. Like he's the youngest player. Like right now, Latu and Verse are a year older than Will Anderson, who was drafted last year. Yeah. So. A lot of people feel like what you're seeing from Latu and Verse is their ceiling. 
and the worry with Latu, like Dre's talking about, does Latu's neck injury worry you? It worries me in the sense of it happened. Right. And he was medically retired, you know, and now decided to come back. So, and, you know, taking, is he taking that Jordan Phillips route? You combine for me, I'm not, I will not be upset if we take a lot to, but for me, it's the combination of not lack of power, but reliant on like technique and finesse and medical history and age. You combine all those together. It has me dropping him a little bit down below Turner. And it's only like you're talking like 1A, 1B, 1C here. They're all yeah. – that. that's the first tier is that is the Latu Turner verse tier. What are well, your uh, thoughts on it there, John? You know, I see uh, – and, and we can go ahead and put this out there. Uh, Fred Butts, if I can put it up there, mm-hmm. uh, with the $2 here. And appreciate you, Fred. Appreciate it, Fred. <laughs> Uh, you know, he's saying Turner fits what we need. Uh, he can do it all. And I agree. Uh, like, but, but at the end of the day, I honestly think any one of the three can do what we need, uh, out of this particular, you know, for this particular position. Right. right. I, think, I think they can all do it. Um, some maybe a little bit better than others, but I think, but I think once you get into the NFL, the, the coaching and everything like that, guys can, can get better better than what they've shown so far that can happen it doesn't always happen sometimes it, it happens really great you know to a greater degree than other times whatever the biggest problem that i have the, the absolute biggest problem that i have uh is there have been plenty of times where we have gone and gotten a guy whether you want to say it's tactic kenley whether you want to say it's uh you know vic beasley with you know uh whatever you know, how many times have we drafted an edge, even in the first round? And we have done that, you know, fairly recently, you know, a, a few times. We've heard he needs to develop this, or he needs to develop that, or he needs to do this and that and the other, and then it just never happens. Now, the different coaching staffs, different methods, all that stuff, I get it, but... I'm tired of drafting a guy where it's like, look, this guy's got all the athletic ability in the world. He's great at this, but in the NFL, you can't just be great at that and and expect to succeed in that one thing all the time. You can win with it, but you can't. But if that's all you got, offensive offensive tackles, especially on the edge, uh, even you know the guys that are middle of the pack or lower are going to catch on, and then you're not going to win any time, right? So. You got to have more than that. I'm not saying that Dallas Turner doesn't have more than the bull rush or whatever. Yeah, he's got some some moves, but that's what you hear about him is he does he does need to develop some more counter stuff, right? He needs to do some more things like that. That's the 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 main reason why I lean somewhat more towards Latu personally is he feels like a guy. He feel to me he feels like the Matt Ryan of defensive edge in this draft. Okay. Matt Ryan, when he was drafted in the league, uh, into the league in 2008, uh, the thing that you kept hearing about Matt Ryan was this guy is plug and play. Like he is the most, uh, you know, pro ready day one ready, you know, pro ready quarterback in the draft. And probably of the last few drafts at that point, right? Like this mm-hmm. guy is ready to go. Latu feels like that, uh, and I get with the the injury history. I know some people are scared of that, and maybe he turns out a guy that only plays in the league four or five years. And if we don't pick him, maybe we're happy we did that. Okay, but Latu feels to me like a uh, like a um, a guy who is ready to come into the league. He's got all the moves. He's got all the the, the technique. And he feels like a guy that is ready to step in day one and get right. And no, I agree with the. Uh, I, I agree with 
that as far as like. But well, well I, and I'm sorry. Uh, to, to answer the question, I kind of got off on a tangent there. No, to not answer you. that. No, never. <laughs> to answer his question, why you know do we are we likely to get Turner? I think like if we are picking up an edge, especially at eight, I think you do pick Turner. Uh, and I think it's likely because of exactly the uh, what Fred Butts talked about earlier. I think he can do it all, and you bet on his traits. Right, hmm. he's a Javon Walker, Will Anderson type of pick. Who do you get? Do we get a uh, Javon Walker or do you get a uh, uh, Will Anderson? Right. If you get Will Anderson, that looks great. If you get a Javon Walker, doesn't look so great. Right. You know. Yeah, so, that's the 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 deal with you know with uh, you know the the edge rusher argument, right? Is one of the other things that you can talk about, like depending on how the team sees and like sees the role for like Arnold Ebiketti, right? Because Arnold Ebiketti and Dallas Turner have played a similar style role, like that Sam linebacker role, you know, in a, in a three four defense, right? So, do I'm not saying that Ebiketti has shown enough to prevent you from taking a Turner, if you feel like Turner is a full on, you know, a full like upgrade, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that, you know, that does play like a sim that, that does play a thought process in a, you know, team building construct, you know, um, you know, uh, exercise. Um, let's see. Kenneth says Latu had football taken away and verse, um, built himself up, up literally, but Turner, has been uh, a rock star the whole time. Uh, just want to be sure we're getting a dog. And I think he's really talking about like, uh, do we know Turner loves football? Right. Um, it's, it's, that's a question that's hard to tell. Um, what, what a person's like mindset is, um, you know, because you can have a guy who by all accounts is ready to go like rip quarterbacks heads off and tack McKinley, but couldn't stay healthy because of previous injury issues. And when he was on the field, never produced. Then you can have a guy who has all the athletic measurables, but by all accounts doesn't necessarily want to excel at his craft. And that's a Vic Beasley, right? Yeah. So who knows if like, like where these guys are going to land now, if you want to talk about like, okay, a guy who's overcome all adversity to get back up to the highest amount of production, you know, that's a lot to, right? Um, he's at, you know, 6'4", 260 pounds. He's got the body size that you want. Um, and production-wise, has had <coughs> the best production out of any of the top three edge rushers. Um so you know these yeah, he's the only he's the only one of the three Latu is the only one of the three who's actually got inter, I think interceptions under his belt. Yeah, he's had he had two interceptions this year. Yeah. Um so yeah, I mean it's it, at the end of the day it's a you know, it's a which flavor do you want? <coughs> do you want, you know, finesse and technique? You would probably go Latu. Do you want like power and uh you know, converting speed to power as a Jared verse with a, you know, explosive first step and, you know, speed to power. Do you want a guy who's got the, you know, all the athletic measurables, the, uh, bendy explosive first step, but has only has one breakout year. And that's this past year. Then, you know, that's, that's you're betting on upside with, with all the traits and Turner, you know? Yeah. So, this will give us a this draft will give us a good clue on uh what this regime is going to end up valuing, right? Uh is it is it traits based? You have um Zach Robinson who spent time and with PFF and their analytics. You have uh Raheem Morris who just got nine sacks out of you know two third round guys and Kobe Turner and uh, Brian Young, 
like each, not yeah, just between yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, nine, yeah, nine sacks each, right? And so, and it's heavily rumored and heavily like talked about that the Rams organization um, has different metrics that they use to identify, you know, potential players because this will be the first year since they drafted Jared Goff, I think, that they actually have a first-round pick. So they've had to get real deep into, okay, what are some identifying factors that will help us identify guys like Apuka Nakua, you know, guys yeah. like Kobe Turner and Brian Young, you know, that can be successful, um, you know, kind of like a money ball type situation, but for football. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Fred Butts with another five hours. We appreciate you. Thank you, Mr. Butts. He says, in my opinion, Turner is a can't miss prospect. Uh, he's very explosive and hard to stop, and he never comes off the field at Bama uh, when he started. Yeah, no, like those are the things that you look at when you look at Turner. Um, you know, the the overall statement from Dan Bugler of the Athletic is overall is Turner is long, explosive edge rusher with body twitch, hand usage, and play strength to leverage blocks and uh, be disruptive in multiple ways. He has the freaky tools to be a potential impact player in the NFL who should continue to improve as his body and rush attacks mature. You're betting on the upside with Turner. I was listening to another um, podcast today uh, with a talking head that I'm not familiar with. I can't even remember his name. This is the first time I'd heard him. But uh, when he was asked by the host, like, how many defensive impact players do you see or game changers, defensive, um, you know, playmakers in this draft? Like he basically said four and the two that he named or the four that he named were um, Latu, uh, Dallas Turner, Quinion Mitchell. And um, the other one was another, it was um, Cooper DeGene. Okay. The, the kid out of Iowa. Yeah. Like so, like this draft. Unfortunately, like in a in a year, it seems like it makes sense to me in a sense, in a comical sense. Um, in a year where we really need, like, a dominant blue chip edge rush to fall to us, there isn't necessarily a dominant blue chip edge rusher. You know, there isn't an Aiden Hutchinson. You know, <laughs> and it's like, yeah. damn it. You know, in a year where we probably could have got one without being in the top ten. Uh, there isn't necessarily one. Well, but the problem is, uh, you know, if it was, if there was a guy like that, he's not going outside the top 10. No, no, like, no. Like that's, you know, like he's, it's going to be, you know, the quarterbacks that it would have maybe would have been uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. And then if there was a uh, Aiden Hutchinson, uh, if there was a Miles Garrett type of guy or, or even, you know, if we talk about when he was drafted, like a, a Javion Clowney, you know, if right. there was that kind of guy, uh, he would be talked about like maybe they skip quarterback this year and they go and get this guy or whatever. Yeah. And he'd probably go in top five, six or seven at the latest. Can, um, Crimson Zats has an interesting scenario. He says, if Daniels, Jaden Daniels or Drake May drops, do you take them? If they drop to eight, I don't think we make that pick. I think somebody, whether it be the Broncos, whether it be um, any of like the Vikings, you know, any of the outside, there's another one that I'm, that I'm blanking on, like maybe even the Seahawks or whatever. I don't see us making that pick. I mean, but if for some odd reason nobody trades for us, I would probably take a, a Drake May. Let him sit for a couple of years. But I don't know. What would you do? I mean, you know, I know a lot of this offseason leading up to this, I've been like, Jaden Daniels is the guy that I want. Okay. I I honestly, up until like a lot of that, uh, you know, the, the talk started up, I didn't really think we would uh, be I, – I didn't even really think of Kirk Cousins right. as, a, as a potential guy. I honestly thought that Minnesota would figure out a way to bring him back. Right. Um, so I just didn't really put him in there. And so once we, but now once we've gotten cousins and I even said this, like right after the, the show where we talked about this, right after it happened, I was like, of course, now 
we, we went and paid this uh, a bunch of money, totally deserved money, to a guy like a Kirk Cousins to come in here and be the starting quarterback. And now, of course, Jaden Daniels is going to drop to number eight, and we're not going to pick him because we now paid $180 million to Kirk Cousins. Right. But uh, if Daniels or May drops to eight, you know, I'm trying my best to drop out of that spot. Yeah. I'm I, I'm absolutely trying my best to get to 11, 12, 13, because you're still going to have, we may, you, whoever your top guy is, if it's Dallas Turner, he may not be there. Okay. But verse or Latu will be there. And either one of those guys, uh, you know, any one of those top three defensive edge guys are fine if that's what you're looking to do with your first pick. Yeah, I mean, even um, like you have, I yeah, you know, I hear what you know Wallace is saying. Like, if nobody wants to come up, but dude, and and right now with the way the league is is said to you know perceive next year's quarterback class, like I could see a team like the Jets moving up to you know secure him. Uh, a quarterback for after what? What are, like what are we hearing about? I I I must have the only, they're like right now. There's only like one name, and that's the Georgia quarterback, which is Carson Beck. Yeah. Um, there's there isn't like it's right now before yeah. this year's draft. Now that could all change once we like get into it. But you're talking about like the Texas quarterback Quinn Ewers, who's okay. Shadour Sanders, the you know uh, Dion's kid. Is you know if he puts together a real good season, maybe he go you know shoots up, but it's it's starting to at least sim like shake out to the Kenny Pickett Desmond Ritter, you know draft uh, yeah. as far as like quarterbacks go. Um, and hey, you know if if that's the consensus of the NFL, like hey next you know next year's draft, there just might not be that guy there. Uh, even if we're even the top guy, you know, Carson Beck, maybe, maybe they don't even feel like that guy is, is the guy, you right. know, whatever. Uh, if that's the case then I would think you would probably have almost like a bidding war for some of these guys, if they don't already have a quarterback to try to get either a Jaden Daniels or a Drake may. So I don't think if they're there, I don't think we're going to have a hard time getting out of that. Pick. No, I don't think uh, so now what now, depending on, what kind of compensation can we get? Again, my favorite way to go about this is probably the Vikings. If we can get both their first round picks this right. year for them to move up to eight, if we can get that 11 and 23, I think it is. If we can get that, I will do that every single day and twice on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Nick says, uh, if Penix is there at eight, do we do? No, I'm sorry. Maybe, maybe at 23, if he's still there right. and you, and, but you up and, and, you pick up whoever, whether it's right. edge or cornerback at eleven or something like that. Right. You, I, I can't see us even trading back into the first round for him. You might, and you might entertain the idea in the second round. But the thing with Penix, as much as like on the when when we started to get to the college playoffs, I was like, oh, this Penix kid is kind of nice. But the more I dug into him, the more it was like it became apparent that like, yeah, he's nice as long as he's clean in the pocket, you know, um, and he's nice, but yeah, he's got, you know, two to three potential, you know, NFL wide receivers catching the ball for him. And a lot of those times they, it, they're laying out for that ball. You know what I'm saying? It isn't necessarily as super accurate as I initially had thought. Um, now look, they sent a big contingent out to Seattle to work them out. But as, Pointed out by other folks, they also worked out Bo Nix while they were out there. And, you know, they, on a top 30 visit this past week, or by, by the end of the week, uh, they're going to have Spencer Rattler in. Yep. Like, Terry already said that he wants to add, you know, to this quarterback room. He wants there to be competition for, you know, Taylor, uh, Taylor Heineke. Yeah. So... Like, yes, if Penix is sitting there at two and you don't, you know, I'd still rather you come out of the first two rounds with an edge and a corner, you know, or a corner and an edge, however you want to flip-flop that. But if that's the case, then, you know, maybe you take them there, but you don't take them no earlier than the second round uh, for sure, as far as Penix is concerned. Um, 
Danny Johnson uh, is echoing that Carson Beck is definitely a guy. Well, he's going to have a chance to, you know, maybe you know, really prove it this this coming season. Uh, I know he played well for Georgia last year, but now he gets a chance to, to do it again and, you know, further distance himself. Hamilton Nash says, uh, "Would you? Who would you want in the second round, uh, even if it's a uh, a little unlikely?" He's like, "Name five players, if possible." <laughs> how about we don't oh. try? How about we do four together, maybe? Um, yeah. If okay, say we go edge in the first round. Say it's a Dallas Turner, mm-hmm. um, somebody like a TJ Tampa that we have talked about, a Ernest Rakeshaw, uh that we have talked about. Um, a, you know, whatever the, like the best corner of more best safety, Tyler Newbin is a name that uh gets bandied about a decent amount. And another, then, another guy, well, then, then you talk about like uh, potentially if he's still there, like a Braden Fisk, right? Uh, I, prior to like the last couple of weeks, I would have said Tavondre Sweat, but now you can maybe get him in the fourth, fifth round, probably depending on this, this DWI stuff. Uh, but if like, if we do secure a pass rusher at eight, because honestly, after the top three, there isn't necessarily a pass rusher that I would just give a second round, maybe a Braylon Trice, um, Braylon Trice, maybe, uh, the guy I looked at Neeland, uh, yeah, Marshawn Neeland. Yeah, Marshawn but, Neeland. But, I, but Marshawn Neeland to me is like late second. Early yeah. He's the late third. second, early third, because like, playing at a smaller school, you would want more production out of that guy. And the fact that he, you know, four sacks both years, um, reminds me a lot of like, uh, boy Mafe from a few years back, everybody fell in love with him. And, um, you know, especially the draft community and he got picked up and by Seattle and has yet to really make an impact. So I like Marshawn Nealon, but I, I think, like you said, later second, early third, something like that. But also, I wouldn't mind, like, I, this is like one of my draft crushes this year is I really would like a lad McConkey in the second round. Um, yeah. I like, not only is his name hilarious to say to me, um, but maybe a, fact, bunch of, maybe, maybe a bunch of the Georgia fans would just be quiet for a little while. Well, not just that. I mean, he's an exceptionally good receiver, you know? Yeah, he, yeah, he uh, is. Like, he's a um, – he's almost like a Wes Welker on steroids, so to speak, you know, as far as, like, his craftiness, his ability to separate, his um, – every route looks the same until he breaks you off, you know? And it's a um, – I really would like somebody like like that um, in in the second round. Yeah, um, him or Troy Franklin. Yeah, Troy. Uh, Xavier Leggett. Yep. I'm about to say Bradley Burnett says I'd really like to see the Falcons go wide receiver in a second. A guy like Xavier Leggett, uh, and then maybe a corner in the third. Um, let's see. Now you got like I need to know where you where that is. I'd like to read that. Talking about Scott Pioli and Daniel Jeremiah were saying that the Falcons could go Byron Murphy at eight because that's the first time I've heard Byron Murphy that high. I jokingly floated out um, Johnny Newton at eight um, a couple weeks back, but both those guys, the the, the top defensive tackles, uh, Byron Murphy and Newton, I've heard a lot of people really mainly have them in the uh, um, like the high twenties. I was going to check and see what what Dane had as far as his big board went. Let's see. Yeah, By- Byron Murphy, like when you look at just defensive line, mm-hmm. uh, he is uh, – oh, well, another name that popped up here that uh, I don't know if he'll be there in the second round is uh, Jerzon Newton. That's that's Johnny Newton. That's the other yeah. um, defensive tackle. He was saying it was on the path to the, path to the draft. So I'll have to check that out. But like um, Dane Bugler's guy, Byron Murphy at – his 16th overall player, and then Johnny Newton as his 28th overall player. Yeah. So, like, if you want to go by, like, you know, if we're going by his big board, in a sense, he does have Byron Murphy ranked higher than both Jared Verse and Leo Latu. And, so, uh, and DraftBuzz.com has uh, Newton, like, 
the average overall rank for him is 19.6. So, you know, 19 or 20. Right. And Byron Murphy's right at 20. So, right. Like they're both in that same. Yeah. That same area. area. So, yeah, I mean, look, I ain't going to be, if, if they got like Byron Murphy is a, is a game wrecking penetrating three tech defensive tackle. And you talk about a defensive coordinator. Who's now our head coach who just spent the past what three years with Aaron Donald. Like if you don't think he has an idea on how to use a guy like that, um, like it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me, I guess you could say. Um, Eric Max says, uh, we still have to draft a QB, but I wouldn't be mad if we drafted a wide receiver in the first round. If you're going strictly BT, BPA, there's a real strong chance that you're going to be sitting there looking at Malik Neighbors or uh, Romo Dunze sitting there yeah. at eight potentially. So, like, if you're Terry, do you go offensive skill position the, you know, first <clears throat> year in a row? Do, well, do, do you th- – like, if you go let's, – let's, let's just say, for the sake of argument, that Malik – because I don't think – uh, Marvin, you know, Marvin Harrison. No, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm I, don't, not. I don't. I don't. I don't, uh, I don't think he's going to make it past four, maybe five tops. Uh, he may not even make it past three. <laughs> you know, but let's say that uh, neighbors is somehow there at eight. You, if you bring him in, you're essentially giving. Uh, or you know, we don't know for sure if he'll end up being this, but you're giving him kind of the equivalent of a Justin Jefferson type of uh, uh, potential, you know, target, right? right? Uh, So you'd be kind of mimicking what he had a little bit out in uh, Minnesota. Right. Uh, So, and some people would be like, well, we've taken offense, this and then the other. But if you feel like this guy can come in year one and really make that offense sing behind the offensive line that we currently have, Okay. Uh, with the with the other uh, skill position players that we have, with the quarterback we have, if this one piece added to the offense just really makes everything click, and that offense can be as good as you think it's going to be, that, I mean, there's a lot of people are like, well, you know, we need defense, we need defense, but I mean, if you get a really good offense, that can take you a very long way, and there's still good players. There's, you know, yes, there is a drop off after the top three edge guys. But there are still some good, you know, Chop Robinson, uh, Marshawn Nealon, Braylon Trice. There are still some guys you can add to the team later for defensive purposes. Braden Fisk, Byron Murphy, if he's still there somehow or another. That kind of stuff I could see, uh, you know, you could really make that offense hum with a guy like that. Uh, Bro Talk offense says, love the shirt. (laughs) It was uh him and Willie were commenting on my shirt earlier. So nice. Uh, yeah, man. I still, I've, I've still never been to a Bucky's. I need to go. Yeah, man. You got to, you got to show the Buseys some love. No, the. <laughs> so, um, but no, like you know, if you if you ever need a gas, a barbecue sandwich, a grill, and a pair of uh, you know, a, a full Yeti cooler, just you know, go to Bucky's because there you go. That makes sense, right? Absolutely. Um. Let's see. Uh, all right. Brother says definitely BPA will be wide receiver at A overall, uh, but the lack of depth at edge and the massive depth at wide receiver, Falcons would be insane to draft a wide receiver. Not to mention we uh, just paid thirteen million dollars uh, for wide receiver too. Assuming you're talking about uh, Darnell Mooney there. So you add that with the idea that. Yeah, I think it was uh, the old Steve Weiss interview that uh, he did with Raheem Morris. Um, the clips have been coming out. I'm, I'm assuming that was probably at the owners' meeting, uh, but but clips have been coming out this past week. But uh, and they got on the topic of Kyle Pitts, and you know Raheem's statement is like, "Oh yeah, we're like we're definitely going to have Pitts involved in the offense." So I think they. I think it does very much realize that we have spent the past, you know, three years on offensive playmakers Mm -hmm. and you should have enough offensive playmakers now on the roster to make this offense go right. Uh, You know, as far as like dropping in uh, the, you know, dropping in 
the QB to that mix with, you know, with the Kirk Cousins. Um, so I would be shocked. Um, I ain't saying I'd burn everything down. Um, cause you know, Josh Gillum makes a point, you know, Dallas Turner doesn't move the needle more than Odin, Odunze would. Like if you're talking about strictly, and that's why when I titled this thing, you know, game changers need it. Right. Cause that's where, that's the actual argument that we're having here in this first round is who is going to be the game changer. I feel like, you know, I probably do say this every draft season. I feel like when you're picking in the first round, you're picking the guy who you think is going to be at worst, a perennial pro bowler, right? Like to me, that's the idea of the first round. Is it, does it always pan out? Of course not. Of course not. But the idea is like when you turn that card in, you're turning in a card that says, I believe that this guy is going to be a cornerstone, is a building block, is a, you know, a guy that we will hang our hat on for years to come. Mm -hmm. And I honestly, a week out, a little over a week out from the draft, as much as I think like, Turner is the guy I'm leaning towards. I just can't sit here and honestly tell you that I have that feeling. Yep. And that's the same being said with Latu, the same being said with Verse, is I just <clears throat> don't have that feeling that this guy is going to be that game changer. And, but when I watch guys like Odunze, and Malik neighbors. Yes, it's fun. It's exciting. It's fireworks, but it's also watching these guys take short passes and doing crazy things with them, mm -hmm. you know, and do we need that? Not necessarily. You have Drake London who in his way is a game changer. You have Kyle Pitts who in his rookie season, we saw him be a game changer. You have Bijan Robinson when given the opportunities. You know, I went back and watched that uh, Packers game uh, the other day. Holy Pete, you know, when when feeding him properly, so to speak, you know, he's a game changer. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, man. I was like, Terry's in a, in a tough spot, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, like I said, the, I think, you know, I, do I do I think we're going to go edge? I think the likelihood of us going edge goes up if we trade back. Oh yeah, right? yeah. I, I I think that I think that because I think the value that you get for uh, uh, 11, 12, 13, maybe even as late as nineteen, I've seen in some mock drafts, uh, the value you get for a verse or a latu at those picks plus the extra picks that you get is is far more palatable at those numbers than uh than at eight. Yeah, like eight. for me if yeah, if we can get eleven to like fifteen, eleven to like I don't know, I don't even know who's in I can't remember who's in the, the like fifteen to seventeen range. But if you can get somewhere mid first round then I feel better. And also like you do that and pick up an extra pick, especially if it's like an extra, you know, second round or, or a third, third round pick this year. Then at that point, it sounds silly, but then I feel better about whoever you're picking. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't necessarily care, you know, um, if it's, you know, if Byron Murphy's sitting there, take him. If, you know, uh, Johnny Newton or Jazeer Newton is sitting there, you know, take him. Any of the edge guys, take them. Because, um, you know, Bro Talk was, you know, says, what if Dallas never hits his ceiling? My counter to that, because I know Bro Talk is a, like a more of a Latu guy, but my 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 counter to that is, what if what you're looking at with Latu is his ceiling? Yeah. And, and yes, he can beat a guy who is, you know, going to be selling insurance next week. You know, um, 
but can he beat a Trent Williams? You know what I'm saying? Can he beat, you know, the uh, Lane Johnsons of the NFL? And I'm not saying Turner can. What I am saying is that I don't feel like super locked in or like confident that any of these guys are going to turn into John Abraham. Right. Yeah. And I, mean, I, I just think if, if we are stuck at eight, unless they really, 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 really like one of the edge guys, whether it's Turner, law two verse, whatever. And they feel like that's the guy they, they have to come out of this first round with like one of those three guys. Uh, unless that's the case, like, the best bang for your buck, as far in my opinion, as far as the the results on the field, is probably going to be a wide receiver, whether that's Neighbors or Dunze. Uh, that's that's going to be probably like it was said earlier in the chat. At eight, the likelihood is if we're strictly BPA, mm-hmm. the absolute best players that will be available at eight will likely be wide receivers. Right. And so if if you're trying to just add talent to your roster, even if it's to a quote unquote now strength. Okay. We got our wide receiver one. We got our supposed wide receiver two. Uh, and then we got some you know guys past him that can, you know, do some things, whatever that's fine. But then you also got Pitts, and you got Robinson's uh, you know, and, and what have you. So if, if the, you know, even if you're adding to that strength, but that is the absolute best player available on your board, even if it's not a need, I'm fine with taking that because that's what you want. You want to stockpile talent. Hmm. And, and again, somebody was like, you know, uh, earlier in the chat was like, you know, we can't take a wide receiver. We have depth. We have the depth at, at edge is just, it is what it is. But then that's when you'd fall into the realm of, we pick a guy at eight that, you know, he's a reach, you know, uh, you know right. whether, whether or not, now he now you could take a guy at eight. Everybody calls it a reach. Guy turns into a, a huge star in the league, and nobody cares within uh, you know a year or two. Oh but no! At no. The end yeah. of, but at the end of the day, if you're just trying to pick up the best players available, uh, and we don't know what their big board looks like, we don't know who they yeah, so, would be the best player available. I think somebody on Twitter was like, "Man, if we could just get a look at that," I'm like, "I agree." Um, Chris has a funny one here. He says, "Wait a minute." There's a more top O-line talent coming out of the Pac-12 this year than any other conference. And I think he's commenting on my, you know, going up against somebody who's going to be selling insurance next week. <laughs> and, and that's not necessarily a shot at just the Pac-12, but that's a shot at the collective of college O-linemen versus what's in the pro O-linemen. And yeah. so I'm, I'm not knocking like the Pac-12 in particular. Well, um, Pac-2 now. Remember. Yeah, yeah, the pack pack one and a half. No, I'm just kidding. The one being <laughs> Oregon, right? Um, but no, I'm not trying to like knock them per se, but I am knocking like week in and week out. He's not going against obviously NFL talent, which you can say that about everybody in every position. But that's that's one of the things that does concern me. Uh, Willie Doc with the five dollars. We appreciate you. Thank you Mr. Doc. He says if we did trade back, which I would love. Uh, who would the teams come up to get if it's just a wide receiver? I don't think uh, we would be able to trade back. It may not be just a wide receiver, but there's a potential of like the, some of the top O linemen, as Chris was just talking about, whether it's Joe Alt or um, Fuaga. yeah, Fuaga or um, the guy out of Washington. I don't know. I can't. Rottenhow. Rottenhow. I can't remember his name. But there's a handful of like top O linemen. Like, does a guy, does a team, you know, do do the Jets want to jump Chicago for an O-lineman, you know, uh, and are willing to give up an extra second to do it? Those kind of things. Um, that's I, uh, It's either a wide receiver, a quarterback, or an O-lineman. That would be what you would, uh, yeah. what you would move up for. Well, but, but like I said, like, if we're talking about uh, being stuck at eight, my guess is we're probably stuck at eight because it's wide receiver. Right. Like that's the, like, I think it's, I think the likely pick uh, is either going to be edge or, or it's either going to be edge cornerback or wide receiver. If we stick at eight. And I think the likelihood is if we stick at eight, the likelihood becomes more so potentially cornerback 
or wide receiver, right? Uh, than it is edge because I think I just like you said I just don't think we have that blue chip edge guy. The top three guys are good. Once you get past them, there is a drop off, but I don't think there's a steep, 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 steep drop off. Like I think I think there is a drop off there, but I think there's still talent that could potentially blossom into star talent in the NFL. You just never know uh, once you get past those three guys. Right. Uh, King says spending that much money on offense and free agency. I just feel like there's no way we go offense first. But I honestly feel like no matter who's there today, we trade back uh, if it's not past eleven and get a second. That's the ideal situation, but I do agree with the sentiment, and I think a lot of fans feel the same way. The year before last, last year, uh, that's what I meant. Last year, you dropped a bunch of money in the defense and tried to build the defense up in free agency. This year, you had to like rebuild the wide receiver room, and you obviously went and got a quarterback. So all the money went to the offensive side of the ball. You know, now you need like us as not for lack of trying. Yeah, uh, they try right, to get, not, get somebody on the defensive side. Yeah, not for lack of trying, but you do feel like you have to to bolster the defense. One thing yeah. I do want y'all to remember, at least as it stands right now, our two sack leaders are still free agents, and it could be a thing where you know they're waiting until after the draft to like, hey, after the draft's done, we'll swing back around, so to speak. So we'll see how that goes. Um, this is an interesting. It's like I think a huge investment of Kirk. Uh, I think a huge investment in Kirk looks like a possibility of drafting Joe Alt. That's if he's there. Or I'm going to put in top O lineman. Let's just put that here. Yeah. Uh, plug either uh, right or move Jake and plug in on left. I always find it hilarious that, that Jake Matthews has been like, what, 12, 13 years now or whatever, 10 years now. And every year, and I'm not trying to pick on Bradley because Bradley's our admin, you know, like he's our moderator. But um, I think every year somebody wants to try to move uh, Jake Matthews to the right side because he played there for a few years in college. I get it, but he has now played much more football, <laughs> a greater number of football at left tackle and does a good job at it, you know. So, um, yeah, I mean, like the guy, the guy's Iron Man. Right. You know, uh, he's he's missed what I think two games total his entire career. Uh, is he is he like one of like the top two or three offensive tackles? In the league? No, is he top ten? I'd say he's arguably top ten. He might be I'm just inside. Top, just I'm about to say just like top ten, side. top fifteen. Like yeah, he's <clears throat> he's what you what you wanted when you drafted him. You you drafted him. You put him in at left tackle, and you haven't had to worry about left tackle for a decade. Like. Yep. That's what you've wanted. And like he, and he's done that. But like, as far as like, you know, do you draft a guy and potentially, you know, put him at like, put him in competition with Caleb McGarry. Okay. That's fine. In fact, if you feel like, Hey, we're not going to run nearly as much outside zone. I don't have a running quarterback. So I do need to like really look at, um, you know, my right tackle situation here because I got more of a statue than we've had in years past, then sure. Like if Joe Alt's sitting there, um, you know, and you feel better about Joe Alt or Fulaga or whoever than you do about, you know, Dallas Turner or Latu, I'm not going to be upset at that, Um, you know, by by any stretch. Like Bradley said, he's been top fifteen his entire career, minus his rookie year. Right. Yeah. You know, so I mean, the guy's been in the upper half of the league's offensive. You know. Uh, you know. Left way tackle. Upper half <laughs> when it comes to left tackles, his entire career. So, right. Like now, like you know, I think to your point is like if you want to draft a Joe Alt, he's and he goes and, and battles McGarry for that spot maybe wins out, uh, then yeah, hey, I'm down with that. And then maybe in a couple of years, if Jake's like, I'm hanging him up, which right, I don't think that's the case. Offensive tackles can play for a long time. <laughs> I was about to say, but Kelsey was pushing 40, wasn't he? Yeah, he was getting there. And I know but Jason I mean, Peters was over 40. Yeah, so like and left tackles playing. can play for, for a long time. So he's still got – and he hasn't had a lot of injury. Well, I mean, he's been injured every – Offensive lineman yeah, yeah, injured every up, single year, yeah. but he hasn't had any major injuries. Knock on wood, uh, he hasn't had any major injuries his entire career. 
So it's not like he's had to battle like a couple of knee injuries in that right. time frame. It's not like uh, ha- what's the busting with the boys guy, Taylor Lewan. Yeah, yeah, Taylor I, Lewan, yeah. great left tackle when he's out when he was out there, but he you know wasn't out there nearly nearly enough. You know. Yeah. So he he, he doesn't have that toll on his body in the in the uh, I just got injured and I'm out for a year. Uh, you know you know, more than one time in his career. So. Yeah, no, I completely uh, agree. All right. We'll take a, uh, yeah. Andrew Whitworth. He says the yeah. X Rams left tackle played until he was like 41. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Whitworth was old as the Hills as far as like, but those guys, because like they, they just get better with age, you know, they, yeah. they the well, because, more you see. Yeah. They just, you see everything. You're you're more used to like you, you don't overreact if if something unexpected comes towards you. You just rely on your your training. You rely on all the experience that, you, that you've had, and so it's it's just you. They're like a fine wine. They if they're good, they just they get better as they age to a point. And at some point, they plateau, but like they don't just fall off a cliff like a lot of right. Oh, agreed. Well. Do we want to close it out with a with a uh, a last mock draft of the? I'm, not, I'm down. With the twenty. It. What does what does the chat think? Does the chat want to do a uh, one last mock draft before the uh, before the season hits? Before the real thing. Yeah, before the real thing goes, I'll give the chat a second to see if they're like, nah, I'm tired of it. <laughs> yeah, I but, saw somebody say they were tired of mock drafts, but I love I love doing no. I, I don't necessarily care about looking at them sometimes, but uh, but I love doing the mock drafts. I like I like seeing like somebody. the The thing is, is like what what you have to worry about, not worry about what you have to remind yourself of when you're doing these. Is like this is a look at a potential scenario, yep. and it is only as good as the information that is fed into it, right? So, um, <laughs> and it says heck yes. Yeah. <laughs> Brandon says one more. So let's do it. Let's do one, one more for the road. Yeah. For then we're gonna do a full seven. I think this will be the first time we've done a full. Be the only time we do a full seven. Everybody can see that good. Do uh do normal draft speed. Do I know norm- we're, we're doing yeah. Norm- normal takes that- you did. Normal takes forever. <laughs> really? Yeah. Normal takes like. Like fast, like I do wish there was something in between fast and normal, uh, because fast is like, rah, but but <laughs> normal is like, gong, gong, you know, and it's like, oh, oh, okay. come on, you know. All right, so enter solo, and okay, okay. So here's All our right. uh, here's our picks, or here's our choices. We got three three offers. Yeah, we got three offers. So we got the Raiders that pick 13 and 44. That's pretty enticing. I like that. That is pretty nice. The Rams, 1952 and a second next year. It's not but bad. they want 187 as well. Oh, no. And then they want to move one. Uh, and they're only no. going to give a second. No, no. I'm rejecting. Uh, and, they, and they want a third round pick. No. Yeah. I'm rejecting you out of principle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do we want to go? Do we want to move back to 13? I'm down. I'm t- well, okay. Let's see who's, who's picked by the way. Uh, like a uh, high hit hide. Yep. Uh, All right. So what's been picked so far is Caleb Williams. Yep. Drake may Jaden Daniels, Marvin Harrison. Okay. I bet you that's how this goes. Uh, Malik. I, I can I can see Jaden Daniels and May getting swapped out. Yeah, but I could. Overall, but... like overall, I think that's probably how Joe Alt and uh, Fushanu. Okay, so, so in this scenario, at number eight, we have the the opportunity to pick either Odunze, uh, one Brock of the Bowers. edges, Brock Bauer, JJ McCarthy's there. Yeah, JJ if, McCarthy. if, if people were if people were talking about potentially taking Drake May if he was there, Quinyon Mitchell. Yep, Fuaga. If somebody's yep. looking for a tackle, Fuaga, J.C. Latham. Yep. Uh, Brian Thomas, but I think he's a little bit farther. Yeah. Down. All right. I think we. I think we trade. Is what I think. Rick King says Raiders is a is a good go, and yeah. then. 
Chris says move back to 13. I'm thinking, because nobody's, like I said, nobody's like absolutely, you know, blowing my skirt away that I don't think we can't get at 13. So, I mean, okay, so let's say if if we move back to 13, that's what? Uh, one, two, three, it's like five. Uh, five. Uh, See, it says, does yeah. swim in water? <laughs> he does indeed swim in water. I mean, yeah. some do. Some swim on the land, but, you know. Well, that's a bunch not very it's successful. Not really swimming. It's like, it's a. It's a yeah, anyway. All right. But uh but we're we're five picks, uh we'd be five picks away. Uh we that would mean that would mean of the guys left, we potentially would have the ability to pick up uh if he's not gonna be there, but like JJ McCarthy, Brock Bowers, well, I would Dallas think Turner. The, I would think that what? the Raiders are coming up for McCarthy. Right, but if we're so talking in the next five picks. Well, okay, let's play this out a little bit. Here's the Raiders, right? Here's yep. where we're swapping. Yep. Let's say the Raiders come up, right? So let's say they take McCarthy. I think that's, I, I think that's who they're going to take. Right. Yeah. So I could see the Bears going after Brock Bowers or Roma Dunze. Yep. Okay. Then I could see the Jets going after Fuaga or Terry and Arnold, possibly. Okay. The Vikings, um, maybe a Jared Verse, because uh, they just did lose like Daniil Hunter. Or Quinion Mitchell. So, and then the yep. Broncos, they could go, like, I don't think, I don't think Roma Dunze, by the time we pick, I don't think Brock Bowers, Roma Dunze, Latu, maybe, and I don't think Turner will be there, and I definitely don't think J.J. McCarthy. So, yep. but I still think we could get a guy that we want, like whether it's an edge or a corner. Yeah. So I'm we're gonna pull the trigger on this. All right. All right, we're accepting. All right, so let's I'm not trading again. Go away. All right, let's see what happens. JJ McCarthy. Yep. Brock yep. Bowers. Bowers. Roma Dunze. The Colts came up for Terry and Arnold, and yep. they took Dallas Turner. So we got Latu, mm-hmm. Fawaga, yep. Verse, Quinion Mitchell. Uh, fun, yep. yeah, Fontanu or Aaron uh, Mims. Now, Bradley's saying Mitchell, I mean, he's thinking corner. Uh, TV says Latu. Uh, okay. like I'd feel okay with grabbing Latu here. Um, and but I'd also feel good about Verse or Quinion Mitchell. Chris says Latu, so that's two for Latu. Uh, two for Latu. Yep. What's your What's your opinion? You are you you going Latu here? Uh yeah. I, I think at thirteen, I'm much more comfortable with taking Latu. At yeah. Well, it looks like it looks like Latu's the overall uh favorite. No, um, May is not there. Yeah, Millie. Millie May is not there. May went up in the top three. Yeah, he went number so, two. All right. And away we go now, dude. Before I hit this, uh huh, do I do we try to come back up into the first? Because if that's the case, I'm gonna have to like hit it quick, or well, we just let you, it play out. You can propose a trade now, I think, and uh, try to get back up into the second or get back, back up into the first. Ah, I, I say I think we keep our we keep our uh, what you call it, our assets, yeah. Oh, we got back to back forty three and forty four. Yeah. All right. So, not worried about trading down in the second. Ah. Uh, right. Oh. Well. I reject. So Johnny Newton is still there. So yeah, that's amazing value. That is really good value. Um, so is Tyler Newbin. There's your lad McConkey though. Yeah, we lad take, McConkey. We, we could take either one now. Yeah. Uh, doesn't really matter. <laughs> TJ or TV. Lad. Says, lad. <laughs> Then there's TJ Tampa. So if we wanted to uh, throw a corner in there. Um, uh, I want. Chris says, Newton, run to the podium. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like, honestly, I would say Newton at 21. And then uh, either Lad or TJ Tampa. 
Right. Well, let's, okay, well, let's go ahead and grab Luke Newton, and then we'll have that conversation. All right. Because I think that's just exceptional value. Yeah. Go away. Go away. All right, so Ooh. now, Lad McConkey, Tyler Newman, or TJ Tampa? <laughs> Hamilton says, McConkey, 1,000%, but Tampa. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's see. So he's six foot one eighty nine, explosive long strider with a powerful knee drive. This is written by Ian Cummings. I bet you doesn't tell me, but I, oh, anyway, has a recovery speed to cover a large swath of of transition out of transitions and erase separation. Impressive fluid mover of his size. So yeah, I don't know. and then lad, lad. 5'11", 186, energized athlete with elite quickness, foot speed, and stop and start ability. Turbocharged technician with throttle control and cut flexibility to put DBs on a string. Um, has speed and explosive to threaten vertically and uh, surge out of transition. Like I really like Lad McConkey. What is uh, somebody's asking, King? Well, what whose weakness? You want me to get Lad. Into, was it Lad I'm or Lad? Okay, let's look at what Lad's weaknesses. He's at average frame and below average length for and reach for a wide receiver. Below average catch radius uh, can limit his range and authority in contested situations. Doesn't always have the strength to fight through extensions uh, within the contact window. Long-term durability can be a question mark given his ankle injuries in 23. So that's... And then TJ... Says doesn't quite have elite hip fluidity, uh, can experience hitches and uh, sharp transitions, sometimes struggles to sink and fully hinge around uh, without delay on comebacks, has good tempo and sequencing in press man, but can be uncontrolled with base, has a habit of throwing himself into contact and can uh, can improve with his wrap-up technique. So. Chris is saying, uh, "Lad is a first down machine. Don't overthink it." <laughs> I mean, he—he's the kind of guy I could see. Like, it, if if you if you were to put a Lad McConkey type of guy, uh, which they had him, but if you were to put La- a Lad McConkey, this guy right here, onto some of the Patriot teams with Tom Brady, uh, a lot of the things that he got done with Amendola, and then. Uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, Wes Welker. Well, Wes Welker, but the last one, uh, Edelman, Edelman, Julian Edelman. Like he very much reminds me of those guys. Uh, and if he can be that for the Falcons, I've wanted a guy like that forever, and we never can seem to find one. Uh, Millie says, "What's the difference between Lad McConkey and Luke McCaffrey?" Now you're talking about my two draft crushes. Uh, <laughs> Luke McCaffrey is just he doesn't have the overall experience. He's still very new to the wide receiver position. He started his college career as a quarterback, uh, made the switch this mm-hmm. last year to uh, wide receiver. Mm. Um, and so it's just the overall inexperience. But for him, you're definitely betting on traits and bloodline with McCaffrey, you know, um, as far as that goes. Um, uh, give me, go. Uh, let's look at strictly wide receivers real quick. Somebody's talk, uh who is it? Uh, King is like get legged in the third. I, I haven't seen Leggett make it out of the second. You know, or is he already gone? Uh, Leggett looks like he's he's already gone. Yeah, Leggett went Maybe to the uh, went to the uh, Titans. So uh, okay, so if we don't go McConkey here. Yep. Then I definitely because I think we have a no we have, we've got these two for two second round picks and then, then we got two that, thirds uh, two thirds, thirds. So. um we could maybe look at a Pearsall do we think maybe he makes it to the third Pearsall has made it to the third more times than not but we could I don't know I say we I say we take Lad here uh, I'm da- I'm I'm down with taking Lad McConkey done Lad all right keeping it at home moving. All right, go away. Okay, so here, Ooh. Braden Fisk. Ooh. Now, we have already taken Johnny Newton. Yeah. Now you can get Cole Bishop, uh-huh. the safety out of uh, Utah. Uh huh. Cedric Gray, linebacker out of North Carolina. 
Um, mm. If you're still looking for a corner, little, little bit of a reach, but Chris Abrams uh, Drain or Drain out of Missouri. Uh, effortless accelerator. He's a little bit smaller of a corner though at five eleven. I mean, like an inch, but yes. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, can you use short area twitch energy to correct his hips? What's his weakness? Average size corner overall with below average mass and only decent length. With his lighter frame, can be out muscled for 50 50 balls by larger receivers. Sometimes idles his feet and widens his base too much in press. Delaying transitions is more natural. I don't, I yeah, so that, that last weakness, not a fan of. And more natural uh, playing off man and zone and has more uncertain uh, press uh, projections. Yeah, it's, because I personally, if I'm drafting a cornerback, I want a cornerback that is that is willing to get up in your face, punch you in the mouth, right? Uh, and and likes likes it more being in press man coverage. Like, that's the kind of guy I want. I don't want a guy who, you know, if you put him in press man coverage, you're taking a chance. If you if he's off ball, he's fine. But it's just I want to be able to dictate to other other teams. All right, so Cole Bishop, because I think I'm agreeing with you know. Bradley saying safety in this spot. Hamilton's like, you know, Cole really can uh, cause us. Yeah. Uh, he's from Peachtree City. Uh, TB's, you know, talking about safety. So let's read about Cole Bishop a little bit. Extremely explosive athlete with elite accelerative capabilities or capacity, excuse me, and closing speed. Has great sync and quickness on direction change and can gain speed with fast strides. Versatile defender with single high too high box and off man like that. I do really Uh, like that shows off great play recognition, route processing and adaptability as play progresses, uh, intelligent physical run defender who can fit boundary gaps, fight blocks and pursue relentless blitzer who can scrape past running backs and run down QBs with his blistering speed. All right. Now let's get to the weaknesses because all that sounds like a future hall of famer. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why is he still here in the in the third right uh yep. despite size has below average proportional length which limits his disruption radius below average proportional length does at times impact his ability to wrap up on tackles that's a problem uh, for safety yep at times it's late to is late to plant and drive vertically to cover emerging seam threats doesn't always play to his 40 dash speed in deep coverage so it does it sounds like uh his measurables and testing doesn't always translate to, to game tape. Uh but well the good does, thing is is we got we do have another pick here at 79 too. So correct. I do feel like uh pairing Cole Bishop with uh Jesse Bates would be interesting. Um uh with one of those we uh should have picked Penix, well, too late on that. Let's see who's here still. Spencer Rattler and Michael Pratt probably be the two that I would really look at as far as that. Well, goes. so of the, of those guys, I would look at. I would. I, I would not be. Uh, I'm just talking about in the real draft. Yeah. In the real draft, I would not has. I would not be mad if we took Spencer Rattler, Michael Pratt, or Jordan Travis in the third, like with one of the thirds or in the fourth. Um, like Travis is as far down as I would go as far as the QBs. Like Pratt yes. and Spencer are probably my two. Like, okay, third round, y'all want to grab a developmental? I think it was Fred Butts on Twitter was like, "Oh, uh, Rattler isn't any different than Ritter." Okay, Ritter is going to be a high end backup. That's what you're drafting for. Like high end backup with the potential to start. Okay, we know Desmond didn't have the potential to start, right? We saw but that. yeah, but 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 Rattler, oh. Rattler from a from from a physical standpoint is a ha, has much better arm talent. Oh yeah, uh, much better mobility. He may not you know wh- whether we're talking straight line <laughs> forty speed. You know, I'm not hundred percent sure exactly if he's faster or not. But like when it's just moving around in the pocket, he he you know he looks much more comfortable doing so. Uh, and I've just seen him make some absolutely bonkers throws 
uh, in college from all kinds of different platforms. The guy's got an arm. Again, a lot of the comps when it comes to his arm talent has been a guy like Mahomes. Right. You know, uh, he's that kind of arm talent. So, yeah, he just has to put it all together. Exactly. Um, so, anyway, I think we go Cole Bishop here and on this pick. I'm fine with Bishop. One, yeah, I think that's the one that makes the most sense. Um, and then here, do we want to grab a QB or just see who's sitting there in the fourth? Because I'm I, willing, I'm honestly willing to come out of this draft without a QB, to be completely honest with you. Um, because I feel like I, at this junction, if we like we've made our bed with Kirk Cousins, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you've paid him a crap ton of money, so if if he don't work out, then we need to be try to be back up where we are in the draft. You know what I'm saying? It's like, um, yeah, I, I'm trying to surround him with as much like help and weapons as I can, not necessarily on that side of the ball, but just the team in general. Man, so Brad, Braden, if he's still there at uh, at seventy nine, yeah, and I know, I know, we picked Johnny Newton earlier. I know that. Yeah, but, but you got two thirty year olds on the defensive line currently. Yeah, and Chris, Chris is like, how is Fisk still available? Like, I, <laughs> I know we need a cornerback. I know we do, but I just don't know if I could pass up Braden Fisk well, at okay, seventy nine. Yeah, but you, you helped with the secondary by throwing Cole Bishop at it. Yeah. Like, and also what we said before, like I could easily see them. Akio Witherspoon is still out there on the free market on the, um, on the market. Is he a, I'm now blanking if he's a corner, if he's a safety, uh, I think he's, a, yeah. Akio Witherspoon. I thought he was a corner. I could be wrong though. Uh, but while you're looking that up, we'll read about, uh, Fisk. Uh, 6'3", 292, has great explosive and snap timing and carries uh, blistering energy into the contact, twitched up pass rusher with violent torquing uh, capacity and a good combo arsenal. Can use build-up speed and power to slant inside from the 5-tech or rush from the 3-tech. Uh, superb feel for leverage and run defense, aligned his base uh, with great blocking power or a great getting below blocks, good lord. With lower and upper body strength, can absorb and pry through double teams. Uh, plays with a turbocharged motor on every down and is quintessential hustle player. So his weaknesses are lacking length. Sometimes impacts his ability to shed cleanly after stacking linemen. Lacks the mass to prevent displacement consistently against combo blocks. Can you can't use length or flexibility as Corrective fail safes when balance is threatened, and here's the big one: will be 24 years old as a rookie. So, eh, another I'm not that worried about that. I'm not, for a guy th- at this <clears throat> point of the draft, I'm not that worried about it. Right about his age. So, corner, you got uh, Kalen Carson. I don't know much about him from Wake Forest, and then Chris Abrams Durain. So yeah. Uh, I mean, I with Ricky Pearsall with another wide receiver, but I don't think that I don't think they'd go that route. No, I, like personally, if yeah. if I if I was just doing this on my own, nobody watching anything like that, and I everything else was the same, and we got here, I'm taking Braden Fisk. Yeah, like, that's who, that's who I'm taking uh, because, like you said, we got the two older guys in the middle already. Right. Uh, we got Taquan Graham, but yeah, you know, we don't know exactly. Yeah, you know, we don't know if. We've got he hasn't like he hasn't him. shown enough to warrant him right. not being like untouchable, so to speak. Right. All right, Braden Fisk it is. Bam. And away we go. Uh go away. I'm definitely not trading with the Saints. Devondre Sweat. <laughs> <laughs> they have <laughs> dropped him all the way down to 93. Um, Jeremy Trotter Jr., that's an interesting one. Uh, we haven't talked much about linebacker. You have Caden Ellis. We don't know exactly what we're going to get from a rehab Troy Anderson. And then you have Nate Landman. Yeah. That's pretty much it at linebacker. So Jeremiah Trotter represents some really good value here. Six, uh, six foot two twenty eight. Um, 
sports a squatty dense compact frame with solid mass fleet footed accelerator with exceptional on attack explosive through uh corridors no oh, cord oh uh, yeah corridors yep it is brain <laughs> i was like wait a second a minute oh uh, let's see what is his weakness is dynamic pass rushing threat who can bend through gaps Lacks high-end long speed and range as gaps will sometimes widen uh, while in pers- pursuit. Appeared sluggish through and coming out of lateral transitions at times. Sometimes attempts to undercut runs through interior gaps, walling himself off, and at times uh, uses tug to aid directional changes at route themes against pass catchers. I mean, that's, you know, every linebacker, I think. Right. Uh, let's see. Let's see who's left on the QB and Michael Pratt still there. Yep. Now you're kind of in that range of, uh, him being somebody. Come on. You want to pick up, uh, uh, you know, Bucky Irving. Oh, Bucky Irving. Eh, I don't need another running back right now. Uh, it wouldn't surprise <laughs> me, honestly, if they, if they drafted one, especially in like the, 140 like this area uh but no i'm not i don't need a running back right at the moment uh, i mean okay so from here we are okay so we got safety we got uh defensive tackle uh, i i would be fine with taking uh trotter uh what we got as far as edge still jalex hunt i've heard some things about him oh jonah God, ellis, jonah ellis. Yeah, uh, I definitely wouldn't mind taking Jonah Ellis myself. But he's he, guy might, that maybe he might be we there. Can... Yeah, at, at the one forty three mark. Um, Xavier Thomas, I've watched a little bit of his stuff. Muhammad Kamara has a lot of like just interesting things about him. Yeah. Um, you're not getting. Oh, Gabriel Murphy is another. Wow, really? He's he's that far down the man. Yeah. So um, maybe we try for Jonah Ellis here at 143. Yeah, uh, so, so I, I'm fine with Trotter. Okay. Uh, like you know, we 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 do like you said. Worst case scenario, we do need some depth in the linebacker room, and at and at pick 109, which is what that's fifth round, right? Yep. Yeah, that I wouldn't mean, be horrible. That, that that's not a bad place to look for depth. All right, let's see if we can. So okay. Andre Sweat. Oh, he finally got picked. Okay. All right, let's see. There's your Bucky Irving. Looks like Joan Ellis is gone. Let's see. Yep. Oh well. Not what about uh McCaffrey? McCaffrey. Let's see if he's still here. Hey, Luke McCaffrey. <laughs> we could get Lad McConkey and Luke McCaffrey. Just have a bunch of white boys running around. <laughs> Oh my god! Ah! <laughs> uh, Javon Baker. Now, if you wanted to go another wide receiver, uh, Javon Baker is. Well, we're picking. We're picking guys now that uh, at their their best hope is to make it make the team as special teams. So, like honestly, who's well, okay? So just go to all. Let's see what's the best. Uh, Bucky Irving. Okay, so Bucky Irving. Jalen uh, right now. Jared, Jared Wiley is an interesting dude. If we really want to load up on defensive tackles, Jordan Jefferson out of LSU. Um, Javon, like I said, Javon Baker is an interesting name. Tyke Smith. Um, Luke McCaffrey. Cornerback wise, didn't really see anything. I don't know anything about these guys, really. None yeah, of these yeah. names are jumping out at me. I'm not even going to try to lie to y'all. You're, this is the part of the draft where I don't know squat. Yeah, well, this is why we tend to drop, we tend to cut it off at the fourth round, you know, when we yep. do these. But since it's, this is the last one, uh, this is where we're gonna we're gonna push through. All right. Okay. So, Jared Wiley. Yeah, six six. Have two. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> uh, most parts of it. Oh, he's, he's a blocker. We've already got that. Yeah. TB says Bucky Irving uh, would be a nice piece. 
what do we what do we see about him? Uh, his clip. What is that one? Five nine one eight two. Now, Chris, I'm surprised Chris ain't banging the table for Bucky Irvin. He has great vision, creative instinct, and can naturally uh, sift through. Congestion. Oh, oh, what? What? Chris just brought this up. Huh. Uh, so yeah, we've gotten a couple of defensive tackles, but they're both kind of in that in that smaller, uh, you know, uh, yep. smaller area. Whereas Jordan Jefferson is a guy that could be, assuming that Goldman makes it to the roster. Uh, he could be a good backup for Goldman as a nose. Yep. No, I agree. I was trying to see if there's Christian Boyd is another one. 329. Yeah. Uh, so, and I think that's, yeah, those, those guys. So do we want to do Jefferson here or for, for that purposes? Um, well, okay, so Jordan Jefferson, do we think Jordan Jefferson is uh, a guy that would make it onto special teams? Or is he strictly nose tackle? Uh, I mean, I think he'd be strictly be a nose tackle, I would think. I don't think he would be. But, I mean, you need those guys. You're going to need those guys. So I, I was trying to remember if it was Jordan Jefferson or – there's another LSU defensive tackle who got himself hurt. Uh, but, you know, everybody had high praises of him. I think it was somebody else. I mean, I have no problem going Jordan Jefferson here, to be completely honest with you. Like, um, I have no problem whatsoever. What about O lineman? Tackles. Guards. I don't know. I don't I haven't heard anybody. Now Kingsley, I've heard that name brought up more than once. Mason but, Smith. But if you're looking at uh tackles, yeah, I don't see anybody that's really jumping out. No. Christian right. Jones, Chris says Christian Jones coming soon. Yeah, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> Mason Smith, uh, that's the one I was thinking of. Oh, okay. The uh, LSU uh, defensive tackle. Gotcha. So, do we want to? I so I actually, uh, I would say, uh, Jordan Jefferson. All right. Because we, I think we need another potential like nose tackle. Perfect. We're losing folks left and right here. Like, Chris is the only one comment now. <laughs> I know everybody else is like, "Can we just get this over with?" I just want to go. Right. On. Uh, let's see. Uh, all right, here's an edge, Muhammad Kamara. Oh, hey, you were talking about, uh, yeah. he's, and I mean, and he is the number 187th guy for the 187th pick. It's uh, uh, it's fate. It's, it's destiny. There it is. Uh, and then last guy, 197. Oh, 197 is not there. He's nope. But Tip Ripman is a name I've heard at least. <laughs> um, we actually had him in on a uh, top 30 visit. Wait, really? Yep. Yep. Uh, Hamilton Nash wants to know if there's any more white receivers. Let's see. <laughs> um, Anthony Gold. I don't know if he's white, but I know I've heard. A lot about him, like as he and look, he can be a return specialist. He's known five, as a return. Eight. Yeah, he's, he's only five, he's only he's only five eight, one hundred and seventy four pounds. He like blow. He get a stiff wind blows him around. Yeah, well, you know, you do what you got to do, right? Man. So, um, so there's that guy, and that's the only name I know out of, out of these guys is. Um. Yeah, Chris says Gould is fi- is fast. Yep, he is that. Um. Ooh, see on uh, Vakai, he's a running back and safety. I do know that much about him. Wait, right, really? Yep. I like that versatility. That's right. Five eleven, two ten. Um. Yep. I'm whatever you want. 
Bun means. Uh, Who the heck is Bun means? I did not see that. What position is he, Chris? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, get, this is where it's like, that name looks cool as hell. Let's pick that guy. <laughs> uh, like, pa- like Patrick McMorris. He's a safety out of California. Six foot two oh seven. Okay, he was a wide receiver. Uh, Jaquan Jackson. Oh, Bub means six one two ten out of Pittsburgh. Bub means is that is that going to be our Mister Irrelevant? Are we going to reach for him at two eighty six at one ninety seven? Uh, I don't think like when you get to this part, I don't think you can look at any of these guys and be like. It was a reach in your seventh round pick there. Let's go I'm with uh, let's, let's set every woman's heart on fire and grab Sam Hartman. Oh, wow. he's t- <laughs> Sam Hartman out of that's uh, crazy Notre because I remember uh, when at the beginning of um, the college football season, there was talk like Sam Hartman was going to be this guy, like oh, yeah. potentially Heisman candidate and all this other stuff. Uh, and now you're looking at potentially not even getting drafted. Yeah, right. Uh, let's see. Trying to figure out anybody who is worth. All right. You know what? Heck with it. We are just going to take. Uh, I was going to say, uh, that, um, yeah, we did tip, right? Tip Raymond. If we, we actually had him on a visit. Yeah. We had him on a visit. That's the reason why. All right. That's it. That's what we're doing. I'm tired of looking at seventh round picks. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, there it is. There is our, and I'll post this on Twitter. I'll post this one on, uh, on the channel itself. This will be our official, uh, 2024 pound for pound mock. The last mock we do before the draft. The next time we see y'all will be, uh, draft night, me and Jonathan, uh, we will be yeah. doing a big, you know, a combined show with out of your Falcon mind and the new millennium Falcon podcast. Yeah. So should have a, a full room for y'all. Uh, a lot of guys chatting it up and BSing and having a good time. So we, uh, I'm, my mic is not going to be, or my camera is probably not going to be as good as this one. Cause I'm probably going to be doing it either from my other laptop or, for my Chromebook. I know I uh, threatened it last year and it didn't work <laughs> out uh, this year. I'm, you know, maybe I'll move to my desk or something like that at some point, but uh, I plan to start on the couch. So we'll see you guys. Well, there it is. Well, I'll be sitting right here uh, at the, at my comfy spot. We there appreciate y'all. Uh, we appreciate y'all taking the time out of your day to come watch us talk about these Falcons, talk about this draft yet again. Like I said, the next time y'all see us, it will be, Draft night, will we be doing it live and doing it for real? Uh, we yep. won't be doing it. We will be watching it live and watching it for real. Uh, no, we're gonna we're gonna run a mock draft while during, the draft is happening. Oh my god! I think people would scream at that point. Uh, appreciate y'all. Uh, as always, y'all can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Grim eleven twenty eight G R I M M one one two eight Jonathan at Jonathan M Holder. Come by and say hi. There you go. And as always, Falcons fans, rise up.